Hello and welcome. This is Roland from Graphic in Motion, and this is part three of our light bulb explosion video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to add some materials to our scene using some very basic and simple redshift materials. So let's get started and Cinema 4D. So before we start to add some materials to the scene now, there are two or three more things I have to address before we make this look beautiful. So first of all, I want to put in a studio background and we will model this quickly. So let's go to our side view and let's take the pen tool and let's just create here three points. One right here, then the second one somewhere around, maybe even a bit further out here, around here. And the other one, let's say somewhere around here, this should be enough. Now let's go back to our spline and go to the point mode and select these points and put in nice values. Here we have 4,500. Here we have also 4,500 and apply this so that these lines are straight. And here I will use zero for the Y and 4,500 for set, apply. And let's take a look here at this point. This should be also on zero and on minus 2,500, apply. Now let's select this point here and right click and use a chamfer here. And I will use a radius, let's see, maybe 1,500. So this can be quite big and it probably this will look quite nice. Now let's select our spline, hold down Alt and click on extrude. Create an extrude and let's make this bigger. I would probably use something like 12,000 and I will set it to an X value of 6,000 because then it is exactly in the middle of our scene. Now let's take a look whether this covers everything nicely and whether it generates problems with our pieces. Well, a little bit of an intersection here, here in the background, but actually I don't care too much because in the end this will be so blurry that we'll probably not even realize it. But let's just take our extrude and let's just move it back a little bit because then we won't get any problems here. So just a little bit back. This should still work. Let me take a look here in the beginning. Yeah. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Good, now we have a studio background. So let's call this our studio and let's drop it down here and I will deactivate my plane because I don't need this anymore. Now, another thing is that we need to exchange the fractured glass with the normal glass exactly at the point in time of our explosion. So let's go to frame number 124. And because I will use the redshift renderer, I have to use a redshift object tag to do that. So let's right click on our Voronoi and let's add a redshift object tag. And let's copy this over to our glass as well. So let's do that. Now in the visibility, I will override this. And on frame 124, I will make sure that the Voronoi fracture is not visible. So I will turn off all of these options here and I will just set keyframes here so that nothing is visible. And on the glass, I want to keyframe all these visibilities here. So let's select keyframes here. Let's add keyframes in here. Now let's move forward one frame and let's deactivate everything here so that our glass is then invisible. And let's activate the Voronoi fracture and keyframe this as well. And then these two will be exchanged exactly at the point in time of our explosion later when we add materials and render this in Redshift. So this is important. Now, another thing that I want to change is my filament because before the explosion, I want my filament to be fully visible. And then when the explosion happens, the logo will reveal. But because I want to add in the logos later on in After Effects, I have to get rid of this filament here and we will do it the following way. So let's just create a duplicate of this one here and let's call this one the filament short and let's open this up. Now on our sweep NURB number one, we can go to object and we can change 
the length here by just changing this growth value. You see now, and let me just turn off this second filament here that you see what I'm doing here. I will just make this a little bit shorter that we later on can composite this in in After Effects. I just want an empty space here from the moment of the explosion to the end of this animation. And this may seem a little bit strange now, but when we later on composite this in After Effects, you will see that this makes perfect sense. Um, and now you have to trust me that this is the right way to do it. So we just need a little bit of room here between these two wires here that we can put in a logo later on here. So I set this to a value of 42 and on this one here 43. So let's set it to 43 on both. And this is my filament short now and then I have my normal filament and I want to exchange these also exactly at this explosion. So let's go to frame number 124 and now I actually can just duplicate my text that I have here. So I duplicate this one by holding down control and drag this one up to my full filament and I hold down control and drag this one from the fracture object to my short one. Now these two will also be exchanged right at the explosion and this is exactly what I need. Okay, so these are the last preparations that we have to do and now we can add a few materials. So now we'll change my layout to my Redshift user layout and I created this myself so you probably won't find this in your layout. Now let's turn on Redshift for now and yeah we do not see much here. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to add in first of all a dome light. So let's go to our lights here and add in a dome light because I want to have some shading happening here. And into the path of the dome light I will load an HDRI and this is also included in the download of this project so you can also use this. Now let's take a look what we have got here. So first of all actually I cannot see my glass. Oh this is because it's turned off here. Okay now I can see it. And can I see the pieces? Yes, I can see them. Okay, so this works perfectly. And the filament, let's take a look at that. Here we have the small one and here we should have the big one, but I don't see it now. Well, no problem. I will add some materials to this now and then we can check whether this works. So for the materials, we will use very, very basic materials. So let's create a basic Redshift material and I will double click here and say this is my glass material. And I open up the shader graph by double clicking on it and then I can choose one of these presets and I will choose the preset glass. And this is all I have to do to get a nice glass material that I can then put on my Voronoi fracture. I can put it onto my glass and I can also put it onto my stamp because this is actually everything made out of glass in my scene. Now I will create another redshift material. This time I want to create a metal material, so I will rename this to metal and then double click to open the shader graph and there is also a nice preset that we can use and in this case I just want to use the iron preset. So these are really basic materials but it is really not necessary to create nice and, and yeah complex shaders here because the scene is so simple that these standard materials will be enough for our purpose here, especially for the tutorial. So. I put this to my socket and I also want to put this to my two wires that are holding my filament. Good, now I have to create a material for the filament, so let's create another redshift material. And in this case I want to have um, emissive material, so let's call this filament. And to create an emissive material we go into our overall settings and change the emission weight to 1 and then change the color to something bluish here because I want this to glow a little bit bluish. So let's put in something like that, not too saturated. And let's go to our base properties. Then we turn off our reflection because we don't want to have any reflection. And yeah, we can turn down the diffuse to let's say 0 0.5. Now we will apply this material to our both filaments that we have. And now you see in the beginning here we have the big filament 
that is filling out the whole light bulb and then after the explosion when we are traveling towards this we have this small piece here where we can then later on put in our logo okay so now there's one more material left and this is our studio backdrop and this is also a very simple material that we will create so standard material call it our studio open it up and in this case I want to deactivate the reflection completely and I want to change the color here to something slightly bluish and dark but a bit warmer than our light so it has something like this a slightly greenish color just that we have a little bit of a difference in between these let me take a look at this that's maybe a little bit too saturated and a little bit too dark somewhere around here for now let's take a look and let's drag this onto our studio backdrop now we see this okay this doesn't look too bad okay guys so this is it with part three of this tutorial series we added some very basic redshift materials and in the next part we will make this look a little bit more beautiful and we will add some lighting to the scene so thank you very much for watching for now and i hope to see you in part number four